Corporate Finance Excel Practice Problem. In this presentation, we're going to work a practice problem in Excel related to ratios that will be comparing expenses to sales. So expense to sales ratios. Get ready because it's time to take our chance with Corporate Finance. Here we are in Excel. We have our information on the left-hand side. We're going to put that into our blue area, into our worksheet on the right-hand side. So what we have are, is our income statement. We're going to be comparing two years to 2000X1 and 2000X2. We've got the sales, cost goods sold, gross profit, and so on and so forth. Now, we've done some of the calculations on the income statement, including comparing the net income to sales. That's going to be a typical kind of calculation that we will have. Gross profits to sales, typical kind of calculation we will have with ratio analysis. We can also do this with basically anything on the income statement. We're comparing income statement to income statement accounts. And remember, the objective of the income statement is revenue generation. So we got revenue generation. That means everything else is, what do you have on the income statements? Revenues and expenses. So everything else is an expense that we expended during this time period in order to help to generate the revenue. So we can compare basically any of these items to the goal of why it was consumed or used during that period, that being the revenue generation. So remember, when you're thinking about these types of ratios, there, there could be some ratios that are going to be comparing balance sheet to balance sheet accounts, possibly income statement to income statement accounts, or you're going to have some accounts that, that are going to be comparing income and balance sheet accounts, at which point then you got to think about the fact that you're, you're looking at two different types of statements here, one being a timing statement, one being a, uh, a point in time statement. Here we're comparing everything that's on an income statement. They're all timing things, meaning the range that they are covering are all the same. So they're all kind of like performance numbers that we're talking about because the entire income statement represents numbers that only make sense if you think about them through the time period, meaning through the time range, meaning... Uh, January through December or for the month ended you have to have the time frame to take these into account so let's do some common other kind of calculations we could have other than the main ones which is you know gross profit compared to sales net income compared to sales we could take cost of goods sold compared to sales right so I could say let's pick up the cost of goods sold and compare that to sales back up to the top line so we're going to take basically we can take any other number down below and compare it back up to the, the top the top number why we used it why we consumed this thing this being an expense of the consumption of the cost of inventory in the time period it was sold in order to generate revenue so this is cost of goods sold to sales and this is going to be equal to we're going to say in 2000 x1 cost of goods sold and the sales item we'll divide these two out this is going to be equal to the cost of goods sold divided by the sales then we're going to make it a percentage uh, home tab numbers we're going to make a percent and then we could add some decimals if we so choose we always have to figure that we're going to be dealing with rounding when we're talking about these types of ratios because we're, we're doing a comparison here so we're going to say the 73.64 this will basically always be less than one unless we're selling our our inventory for something greater than what we purchased it for which would be a strange situation the inventory would have had to go down in value or something like that so this will always be uh you know uh, uh, a number less than one and therefore or less than a hundred percent so we can represent it as in a percentage all the expenses should be uh in that fashion so if we then say the 2000 x2 will take the cost of goods sold compare it to the top line there we're going to say this will be equal to the cost of goods sold divided by the sales and let's make this a percentage let's do it this way this time i'm going to copy the formatting of this cell home tab clipboard format painter and then i'm going to put that over here for the format painting of it so then i'm going to select these two cells going to give it the double underline home tab font group and the double underline then i'll select these two single underline home tab font group drop down single underline so now we can do the, the comparison, obviously, in a, on a dollar amount, comparing cost of goods sold to sales. But it can be a little bit difficult to see that relationship of how the cost of goods sold is tying into the sales. Because it should be, you would think the relationship would be somewhat constant if we sell inventory. Because we'd have the markup would be the same. So even if the sales go up substantially, so they went down you know, in this time period, you would think that the, the ratio between the cost of goods sold and, and the sales would be somewhat uh, consistent if you're talking year over year or period to period 
in one company unless there's been some kind of change in what we're selling or the price we're selling it or the cost that we're selling it for. Also, of course, you can compare this cost of goods sold percentage to cost of goods sold percentages of other companies that may be larger or smaller uh, than we are, whereas we cannot compare to other companies the cost of goods sold dollar amount because it won't tell us anything significant. So we can do the same for any kind of expense. We're going to take the selling and admin now, and we'll do this as a total. Like selling and admin includes all selling expenses and, and admin uh, expenses. So within that subcategory, you could have other expenses within it, right? Selling expenses could include commissions, anything on the on the store where you sell stuff. Admin expenses could could include the salaries of the management and anything on the corporate office, for example. So we're going to be picking up the selling admin and we're going to be comparing it once again to the top line to sales all these expenses why do we have them in order to generate revenue so we'll compare that to the sales and this will be the selling and admin expense to sales and we'll divide this out this equals the uh, selling and admin divided by the sales let's make that a percent go into the home tab and the numbers group making a percent and increase the decimal 7.34 once again this will always be less than zero therefore or less than one or less than 100 percent and therefore we can represent it as a as a percent the expenses should all be less than uh, the revenue amount and then we're going to do it for year two so we're going to say year two selling and admin and then the sales dividing this out this equals selling and admin divided by the sales let's copy the format now home tab clipboard format painter and put that on over here so there we have that we'll double underline the bottom number selecting these two home tab font group drop down double underline we'll put the underline here and go home tab font group drop down the single underline so once again, you would expect then the, these ratios to say, you know, somewhat constant. Now, we could have some more fixed costs that would be in selling and admin, meaning things like the rent are not going to change in the same way that we would have changes in the cost of goods sold. So we could have some different percentages. We can Once we figure these out, we can kind of drill back down on them uh, as, we, as, we, as we move forward and kind of figure out, okay, what's going on here? Why is it going on? And how can we use that for decision-making purposes in the future? So then we're going to do the interest. We can take the interest to the sales as well. So we can figure out, all right, here's the uh, interest expense. It's going to be this item here. We're going to pick up the amount. It's going to be the 44.4. And then we can pick up the sales. We're going to compare that once again to the top line items, to the sales. We had to do financing here and therefore be charged interest in order to help us generate revenue. And then we're going to be comparing this out. So this is going to be the interest expense compared to the sales. We'll divide that out. This equals the 44.4 divided by the 3,490,000. Let's make that a percent. Home tab, per, uh, numbers group, percent. We'll add some decimals. Once again, it could go on, but we usually add maybe two, about somewhat standard. We could do that for 2,000x2 uh, interest expense compared to the sales for 2000x2. Dividing this out, this equals the interest expense divided by the sales. I'm going to copy the formatting again, home tab, clipboard, paintbrush, format painting. We're going to select these two items, home tab, font, underline. Select these two items, home tab, font, double underline. So, so there we have it. And again, we can compare the, uh, the interest expense to, uh, to the sales. Now, again, you would think the interest expense might, uh, might be, be kind of standard based on whatever the loan terms are. So if there was no loan that, uh, that took place, if no loan happened, then you would think the interest expense would be somewhat similar. They, they have changed. So the interest expense has changed the, the exp but if the expense is going to be fixed, then it'll have a different relation to, to the sales as the sales vary. So as sales go up and down, if you have the same loan terms and the interest is going to be the same, then it's going to have a different relationship than if it's something like cost of goods sold, which is a variable cost. Cost of goods sold is going to go up and down as does the sales. Because if you're, if you're selling more units, both sales will go up as well as the cost of those units you're selling. If you're talking about something like rent that might be in the uh, selling and admin type of expense, for example, it's going to be constant. So as sales go up, 
the rent's going to be staying the same. So that means that a fixed cost is actually as volume goes up, the uh, the rent will stay the same. It'll be a lower percentage of of the total volume. So we got to we when we do these types of ratios, we want to get some idea of the the uh, functioning of or how the behavior of the expenses will behave and we'll get into that a little bit more later so we're just going to going to work on the ratios at this point in time and kind of get an idea of the ratios once we do the ratio analysis then we can break down on the behavior of some of these things like the behavior of the costs and then do further analysis breaking them down breaking these down further for example um you know if if the cost of goods sold uh, went if there's a change in cost of goods sold you know what what could be driving that change in cost of goods sold well it could be that we sold more items meaning the volume went up or down so in this case the cost of goods sold uh, went down in total so it could be that uh, we sold less in volume or maybe we lowered the cost of uh, of the things that we're selling so the, the unit price of the items that we are selling which lowered the cost of goods sold, even though we sold the same amount. So as we compare some of these ratios, we can get a better idea of th that story. And then we can break these ratios down further and, uh, and look at the components of them. Also note that you can basically compare everything to sales here, right? So we could take, take these two income statements and say, hey, look, I'm just going to compare everything back up to the objective line to the sales line. So for example, I'm going to compare equals the sales to itself i'm going to make this 100 percent home tab numbers and 100 percent and then i'm going to compare everything back up to sales so i'm going to say this is cost of goods sold divided by the sales i'm going to make this a percent so we'll say let's make this a percent home tab numbers percent so that's going to be the 74 percent let's add uh, some decimals to both of these home tab font adding a couple decimals and there's our 73.64, right? And then we could do the gross profit and say, okay, gross profit's a subtotal. Gross profit divided by the sales. And I'm going to add the percent, home tab numbers percent. So there's the gross profit. If we take the 100 minus the 73.64, we're going to get that gross profit uh, percent as well. So now you've got this, you know, the relationship between, of course, the sales cost of goods sold and the gross profit selling and admin we're going to take the 256 divided by the uh, sales let's make that home tab font group percent add some decimals there's going to be our 734 so there's our 734 then we take the operating profits equals the operating profits divided by the sales and i'm going to say home tab uh, numbers percent and 19.03 then the interest equals the interest divided by the sales once again we're going to go home tab numbers percent add some decimals there's going to be our 1.27 1.27 percent then we'll take our income before taxes divided by the sales and we're going to go home tab number percent add some decimals there's the 17.74 the tax over the sales and then we're going to go home tab numbers percent add some decimals and then the income after taxes divided by the sales percent numbers and there we there we have it now these numbers then are, are items these percentages are something that we can compare we can't compare this income statement to like another company that has different different um volume of sales even if they're in the same industry but we can compare something like this on the line items and, and benchmark it uh to to another to another statement and then we can obviously compare 2000 x2 i'm going to do this a little bit differently i'm going to say this number divided by itself i'll format that one first which is percent and then i'll do this one the same way and then we'll copy it down so i'm going to say this number divided by sales but i want sales to stay the same and then i want to i want to move the other sale as we copy it down therefore i'm going to make the sales number an absolute reference by selecting f4 on the keyboard and or putting a dollar sign between the l and the two you only need a mixed reference but i'll just use an absolute it's be fine and then i'm going to say uh home tab numbers dollar sign and there's the 72.24 and then i'm going to auto fill it down 
selecting the auto fill handle and dragging it down. So there we have it. Now I got the underlines kind of messed up because I used the auto fill, but it took the right numbers that we wanted. There's two ways you can fix that. Notice if I undo this, I could say I'm going to copy and paste and say I just want the formulas, uh, just the formulas. Uh, something's something's up with it just okay just the form and then I can update it by going to the home tab numbers percent and adding the decibels like that or if I was to copy and paste it out uh, let's say we did let's say we did this way I'll just do it again if I copy it and paste it out this way I can then copy just the formatting of these cells because that's the formatting I want home tab uh, font, <laughs> clipboard, format painter, and then paint the format here. And then if we wanted to see these differences more clearly, we can, we can add a difference columns on the percentage if we'd like to. We could say that I want to take the 2000x2 minus the, the 2000x1, and then I would format paint it, home tab, format painter, and then let's copy that down. So we'll copy that down. And then I'll format paint the entire thing here. We'll go to the home tab, clipboard, format paint. And we could put that here and have this the difference. And then that could help us to kind of see, see some of these uh, different ratios. And again, these are, these aren't, this isn't the percentage change over time, uh, year, year to year to year. This is us comparing everything within the current year, the expenses compared to sales and then taking a look at the differences on, on those percentages as compared to, uh, to the sales item. So in other words, we could do another uh, horizontal kind of analysis, meaning uh, the, the uh, 2000X2 minus 2000X1, the change, right? We could take the change, which is gonna be, for example, for sales, this minus this, and then we would divide that by the prior year by the prior year, and this would be the percentage change, the change over the prior year, making that a percent, and that would be a, a 10.32 decrease. So sales, we would say, went down by a 10.32 decrease. That's not what we're doing here. What we're doing here is, comp is, a, hor is a vertical kind of ratio analysis, comparing everything to sales in the same period. And then we can take a look at the difference between 2000X2 and 2000X1 as everything, uh, as we compare everything into and of itself into the goal of the income statement, revenue generation.